even at the end of last year's AFL Grand Final as the Adelaide Crows players lay slumped. On the MCG surface, there was a feeling they weren't going to stay vanquished for long and that the dominant side of 2017 would again be the team to beat in 2018, but it's not the case. After 12 rounds Adelaide is 6-6, sitting in 10th position, on a losing streak of three games, and with Hawthorne at the MCG this week, a bye, then West Coast, Richmond and Geelong. Missing finals altogether is starting to look possible for the Crows, but what has gone wrong? To make the team that appeared so imposing as they lined up for the national anthem on September 30th last year turn into the slow and confused side that couldn't contain an inexperienced Fremantle. Missing its two most important players in that Fife and Aaron Sanderlands. It seems that morale is at an all-time low, a situation created by three important factors. Adelaide's medical room currently contains Brad Crouch, Mish McGovern, Rory Sloan, Brody Smith, Rory Laird and Tom Lynch. Lynch and Laird are only out for the one week, but the others are long-term and Taylor Walker has also missed five games so far this season. But the quality of names on the sidelines is only part of the problem, with the source of many of the injuries appearing to stem from a new training and recovery schedule, run by a group called Kangatech. It's one thing to blame injuries on bad luck, but when the evidence points towards bad management it erodes the players' confidence. The Crows had a shortened preparation due to getting through to the grand final, so they tried to up the ante on everything they did over summer, with the Kangatech recovery system only being a part of that. The most famous, or infamous, aspect of Adelaide summer was a camp on the Gold Coast, where senior players were exposed to extended emotional and psychological stress that led a source close to the club to say many were not in a good headspace as the season got underway. Walker defended the practice when it came to light back in March, but it emerged Tex was furious when word got out and went on a fearful hunt looking for the players that leaked the story to the press. If the strain of the camp wasn't enough then the fallout from it, just as the season got underway, certainly magnified any ill effects and again eroded the camaraderie of the Adelaide playing list. Historically, the Crows have not got a good reputation for hanging onto the star players, or for handling contract negotiations. This year sees another two big names. Sloan and Lynch, come out of contract and enter the market as free agents, and all reports suggest Adelaide is once again doing little to make its players feel wanted. Sloan has proven crucial to his side's on-field fortunes in recent seasons, but is likely to leave as much due to family reasons as financial ones, which you'd think would make Lynch, the league's best linkman, a priority. However, consistent reports out of Adelaide suggest he is being noble in negotiations. Considering recent dealings that have seen names like Tippett, Lever, Davis and Dangerfield go into state, the Crows need to make not just Tom Lynch, but all the players feel like they're wanted in the city. If churches, by once again refusing to recognize the contribution a top-line player has given the club, they are saying to the entire list they're disposable, doing nothing to make the players think they're part of something special. Every year all clubs have injuries, off-field controversies and contract negotiations. But Adelaide seems to have approached all three areas poorly and come out in the negative on each account. You can make your players line up like power ranges and train them to play like machines, but at the end of the day the human beings are no matter what their physical attributes or capabilities, they are amount to nothing if there isn't confidence and a sense of belonging behind them. When the final siren blew on the last game of last year it was Richmond that stood victorious despite few predicting they would. Internet trolls and drunken experts at summer barbecues declared the Tigers the worst ever premiership list, but it was a team of no names with a few committed stars that were made to feel like a family by a club and a coach intent on the journey being an enjoyable one that held the cup aloft. Adelaide should have taken note.